This is Design Futurecast. I'm Maria Lorena Lehman. In this ninth episode, the design experiment and result that we will investigate is called Light Chaser. It is an architectural design concept and can be seen at designfuturecast.com forward slash episode nine. So it's 536 in the morning. I'm drinking my morning tea and I'm looking at a spectacular sunrise. It's incredible how the colors of the sun's light seem to bounce off of the clouds as they're constantly moving and changing in color, shape, and location as the clouds travel across the sky. So this type of sunrise, and even corresponding sunset, make me question what it would be like for a design creation to be like the clouds in the sky that are constantly changing and entering beautiful dialogue with the sunlight. As the earth rotates, the sun travels across the sky. And this leads me to question what it would be like for an architectural building concept to synchronize with the motion of the sunlight as it travels across the sky. What would the geometric form for this design creation concept look like? What would it be like to experience a building that synchronizes its own kinetic movement with the sun's movement throughout the day. So in this next design project called Light Chaser, we're going to explore what it would be like for an architectural design concept to behave like a cloud that enters dialogue with nature to represent it in ways never experienced before. This project was really fun to work on. Light Chaser was based on a preliminary conversation about buildings that kinetically move with the sun's movement. This is a conversation that I was engaged in with a group of other designers years ago. But the idea of an architectural space that moved with nature, with sunlight in this way, always stuck with me. And I wanted to pursue this notion of a building that chases sunlight, in a sense, to see what form it would actually take as it becomes more and more tangible as it gets realized. So I wanted to see what this idea could look like if designed. Again, what form would it take? What would it look like? And how would it feel to experience such a building? I had a concept in mind for what I called the frame room. And this was a place within the building where a person could stand within this kinetically moving space, architecture, to see nature represented anew. In other words, I find it really interesting when a design or a creation doesn't just harmonize with nature, but goes even further to incorporate and integrate nature's behaviors within its framework to represent it in ways never experienced before. So in other words, for this light chaser building, how can the architecture and movement of the building create an experience that gets coordinated and harmonized with nature's movements to make this experience for the building occupant one that is exciting, engaging, and unforgettable. So to create the Light Chaser architectural concept, I of course sketched concepts on paper. I modeled a resulting concept in SketchUp and then used the software rendering program VU for daylight and architectural building rotation studies. I created renderings from this software program, which I used to see the concept. And I used this also to create animations for not only the daylight studies, but for rotation of a camera around this light chaser building as well. And it's 
fascinating to see how the sky and the sun's light changes during the light studies within this software program. Because the building, and specifically the frame room, gets aligned with the sunrise and sunset as the sunlight travels through the sky during the day. Now, of course, the building is rotating as the sun moves through the sky. And this creates for very interesting experiences that the building captures, like film, The building captures the ever-changing and always different, beautiful performance of nature's sunlit sky as it travels through the sky within time. So in other words, this makes time an active player in the way this architecture behaves and engages with its occupants to represent nature anew. When working on the Light Chaser building, It was fun to imagine it as a film school where occupants within the space could really experience the different places within the building, in particularly the frame room, to really catch a glimpse of how architecture itself, when kinetically moving, can create a real-time, real-world experience of a film, so to speak. And while the film is not captured to be replayed over and over again, with the exact same footage, this film that the architecture captures and plays is through the occupant's architectural experience that is ever-changing as they experience it and journey through the building daily. So in the end, this light chaser architectural concept resulted in very interesting geometric forms that invite its occupants on a journey through the building every day. And again, no two days will ever be the same because of nature's ever-changing behaviors as the building rotates along the axis following the sun's movement through the sky. Now, the notion of representing nature to be experienced in entirely new ways becomes more nuanced through this design. For example... The frame room sits at the end of the main cantilever that rotates along the furthest radial from the rotating center of the building. So standing within the frame room as the building slowly rotates throughout the day creates a very exciting, engaging, and unforgettable experience, especially because the geometric form of this light chaser concept is cantilevered, and it cantilevers during the morning over the water. And as night falls, it cantilevers over land. So there's this juxtaposition and also this bridging as the rotation of the building brings the occupant's experience from water, which is again nature, to the land, which overlooks a city skyline, which is the man-made. So it harmonizes and bridges nature with the man-made together in entirely new ways through its rotation as well. So there were some insights and questions that this design captures and surfaces. For instance, as a designer, artist, writer, filmmaker, or game designer, how do you work to represent nature anew? In some creative works, It's not enough to simply harmonize with nature because for some design challenges, it becomes important to integrate nature's behavior into the design language itself. So when creating, you may want to consider how your building, book, film, or video game can work with nature, either by pulling from it to impact a virtual world like in a book or video game, for instance, or by pulling from it to inform the behavior of a real-world physical creation, like an architectural building or footage or a scene in a film. So essentially, by not only learning from nature, like in a biomimicry or biomimetic sense, but by also pulling from nature's beautiful behaviors, we are able to create environments that are not so static, We're able to create environments that are more dynamic and adaptive and interactive that 
interact not only with the people that they serve, but with their surrounding context. So if creating an architectural building, it can respond to not only the people within it, but also to its surrounding context. Like in the case of this light chaser building that responds to solar movement. As it becomes synchronized with the sun's rotation, this building captures new experiences for its occupants. And in doing this, nature becomes an extension of the architecture and architecture becomes an extension of nature. So the boundary between the two blur from an experiential standpoint. So when designing for the 21st century and all of the needs, challenges, and application opportunities, it's important to note that you can push your creative projects into new behavioral dimensions. And this is always an interesting exercise. For example, the form that this light chaser building took is a direct result of not only its site and program, but also of its newfound relationship with the nature which surrounds it. This is a new way for architecture or a creative project to engage with its context. By creating a new type of language by which it engages, communicates, harmonizes, and coordinates to innovate new experiences. This type of design thinking is what creates unforgettable moments that your building occupants, readers, viewers, or game players will want to journey through again and again. So now I invite you to ask, how can I connect with nature through my creative work in a way that creates an unforgettable experience? by representing it in ways never experienced before. For more inspiration and education on creativity, design, and architecture, visit designfuturecast.com forward slash subscribe. There you can join the thousands of subscribers who regularly get my Design Insight Digest delivered straight to their email inbox. I think you will love the inspirational and educational articles, designs, and special invitations offered through this publication. Again, simply visit designfuturecast.com forward slash subscribe to join the Design Insight Digest. I look forward to seeing you there. 